Yeah, what acts is the iron Counsel of the people So when I'm speaking in Hebrew I wanna make it clear to you That I tried the tribulations What's beyond massive Now your pastors will teach us the Lord prophesied the hand shall rise, your neighbor shall rise against your neighbor. It's only gonna get worse. It's only gonna, you think they killing over a chicken sandwich? You wait till they shut down these trucks and stop moving these, um, this food to these supermarkets. You wait till they call martial law. I know y'all heard about martial law. You watching China go through it right now. They stabbed one of their prime ministers up there in Hong Kong the other day. Mm. They not play. That's right. They not play. And we walking around here in America like it's going to stay like this. Like the times ain't changing. The times is changing. You better change with it. Man, if you know what's happening with the American dollar, we all take our dollars right now, put them down and burn them shits. Because you know that's where it's going. That's right. Y'all better check out the system. If y'all, who heard about Bitcoin? Who know anything about Bitcoin out here? Anybody know about cryptocurrency? If not, you better familiarize yourself with it. Y'all know this is going into a cashless society. They're breaking down the dollar. By the doctrine of Christians, fools who would turn from the prophets and wisdom. Now we cook food in the pasta, we pissing. Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox and the ass know they head where they fed, but we not finna listen. Right in the day, trying to fight for position. Another homicide when the ops need assistance. Contradiction. Another march is a farce while the gang's on the block is against them. Ironic that we plot to the dark of the pigment. Unaware of the sharks in the distance. Tell me what you stand for. What they calling you a man for. Do you do it for a hand or applause? It's a damn war. I keep a sword in my jam sport. I've been thinking about the fan more. I'm trying to pan for it. We all want to reap, but it starts with you planting the seed. Taking a stand, putting your roots in the ground I'ma build with the ones who believe that we've been deceived Scholarly lies, till we gon' run to the college for help The lesson is stressing the way you progress through a test Is investing in knowledge itself, polish the belt Raising the horn, prepping the slaughter for those who are scorned Their life is a tomb, the wicked is strange from the womb So they dead just as soon as they born, but me I was sworn To protect and serve to the end if it's costing my life Bearing my cross and I'm following Christ Left in my sin, but we finna get right Why is that? Cause I'm back in the zone again Got the coldest pen, seeing scripts in my poem again Reading Revelations 1 on my phone again, I know the truth can't hold it in. I should phone a friend. Shit is deep, so I'm focused in. On the line like a clothing pin, feeling close to sin. So I tap into the soul within and lose limits like soldier slim. Wait a minute, said I'm back in the zone again. You alone again? You should let me in your dome again. Bump that, I'm a leg. I was chose to win. 11 shots if I'm 0 for 10. Cause I ain't giving up. I'm back in the zone again. So I'm zoning in to the Christ on the throne again. But the weak finna die, but the stronger win. I find strength from a song within. You supposed to be mad. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 tell you. Surely oppression. Make it for a wise, wise man, man, man. So if you ain't mad about the things that's going on, then, then you, you ain't wise. wise. And it says a gift destroyeth the heart. They have military to help out. And in the article, uh, I know you don't reveal your sources, but I'd like you to elaborate about, about the metal shackles they're going to put on the wrists with the computer chip, and maybe Catherine Albrecht, you can um, add to that comment. Unfortunately, I believe one among several plans to ensure that the government's edict of mandated vaccinations, and by the way, the state of Oklahoma last week passed through its house just such a law from the state of Oklahoma and its residents that everyone will be vaccinated in the state of Oklahoma. Now, having said that, there are also plans that will ensure that you do not freely travel, nor will you be able to really go anywhere without proof that you have had the vaccination at the point that the government mandates that certain levels of the population take the inoculation. When that happens, I have been told by state troopers across the country that there are plans ready to be implemented that would include roadblocks and choke points, as we call them, major interstate junctions around major cities and so forth, where the greatest number of people can be held until they are either, they either prove their vaccination by papers or in the case of a medical specialist in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who told me that they had observed a semi-tractor trailer being unloaded at the hospital loading dock, pallets and pallets, scores of cases of metal bracelets that once put on would slip into a place and, and be either uh, pegged in there with some kind of uh, 
device to hold it in place, but the band was meant to be permanent. On top is a chip. That chip will include all kinds of information about you and the fact that you have been inoculated. Now this is one of several plans. It has not yet seen the light of day, but it is there. It's in readiness. You choose the poison. It's either slow homicide or slow suicide. They're either going to kill you with the injection, or if you go up and say, sure, I just want to be able to go wherever I want to go, and you take it, to me, that's virtual suicide. Just slow motion suicide. So we've all talked about not getting the vaccination, that's clear. But you may not have a choice. I am told that the plans include buses that will be standing by for people in roadblocks that refuse to take the inoculation. The people will then be escorted to the buses and taken, as I was told, in the state I was in at that time when I was speaking to the troopers, you're going to get a free ride to a nice warm bunk at Fort Riley. Well, it, it, it's one of several plans. We can't know until they're implemented, but I assure you that those plans are in place and law enforcement is going to be pulled in. And one of the articles I wrote, I said the law enforcement community will enforce a new world order. There will be many that will not, and that's good news for us. But I believe it's still a majority that will be standing in line saying, get your shot or get on the bus. That's what's coming. Shalom Yisrael, Shalom Yasha Allah. This is your wet I'm, otherwise pronounced in the ancient Hebrew, Yahweh Aitaza I'm, Council of the People, and this is another episode of Phone Tap. All right, and I want to give all praise and glory due to Yahweh, who is God, Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shad, in the name of Jesus Christ. Today's lesson is going to be the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows, right? Because Christ told us in Matthew chapter 24 that um, when you see these prophecies being fulfilled in the last days, just know that this is the beginning of sorrows. So this is only just the beginning of what we're dealing with. The coronavirus, COVID-19, is only just the beginning. People losing their jobs, not working anymore, only just the beginning. People going into supermarkets buying up all of the toilet paper that's only just the beginning right and this is not to scare you but this is actually to prepare you what am i trying to prepare you for the major change that's going to happen all right the major change that's going to happen after the events that is unfolding before our eyes currently right now as we speak and as you can see right here on my um, notes, I have points of major changes that I believe is going to happen when there's some form of normality, right? The first major change that I have is a lot of businesses will be closed. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I don't believe that this is going to be the actual event that's going to cause the economic collapse that the Bible is prophesizing about. But I do believe that economy that that the economy is going to suffer great from this. All right. And a lot of businesses is going to close, which is going to lead to the next point that I have. Our society, the way we operate will change. It's going to be different. All right. The way we speak to one another, congregate, deal with one another. All right. Our exchanges, technology, how how is implemented into our lives. All of that is going to change. Right? The mark of the beast is indicating that we're going to be living in a cashless society. So getting straight into our lesson, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter seven, verse 19. And it reads. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath of the Lord. So the Bible is letting you know that people are going to cast their silver into the streets, throw their gold into the streets because it's not going to be of any value to them. It's not going to be of any value. 
right? Letting you know that the value of the dollar that we have today will decrease to the point all of the countries have to have some form of an economic crisis, which is happening right now as we speak with the COVID-19. All of the countries are in lockdown and they're all suffering in regards to um, dealing with business, sales, money, and exchange. All right. We're going to read this next scripture in the book of Revelations, chapter six. And this whole chapter is about the seven seals. All right. And just to let you know, all the seals, every single seal have been broken except for the seventh seal seal which is the return of christ we are living in the sixth seal right now all right and we're going to learn about two of the seals that has been broken because once a seal is broken the cause and effect of each seal um continue to occur until the seventh seal until the return of hamashiach yawasha who people ignorant call as jesus christ so we're going to read about the third seal Revelation chapter 6 verse 5 through 6 and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil or the wine. Right. So when I read this and I read a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Right. What I'm reading and what this is indicating and showing to me is that there's going to be economic collapse. All right. This is what's going to lead us to a cashless society. But before we enter a cashless society, there's a few things that have to happen. All right. They're going to enforce vaccinations and make it where people have to get vaccinated. All right. But in order for that to happen, that means more pestilence is going to come upon this earth to validate the point of the government. Now, this pestilence might be more man-made viruses or might be just something random sent by the Most High. Who knows? But this is going to occur and it is going to happen to prove without a benefit of the doubt to the sheeple, the people who are brainwashed, that the government is only trying to protect you. And many people is going to get the vaccinations. I'm going to read another scripture dealing with this um, seven seals. We're going to read about the fourth seal. Revelations chapter six, verse seven through eight. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death was death so as i said before once a seal is open it cannot be re resealed it cannot be closed the effects of that seal will continue to happen until the seventh seal is broken until yahweh Hamashiach, who people ignorantly call jesus christ come back all of these different plagues all right that's been coming out continuously every single time they come out they come out worse because it is a fulfillment of the fourth seal being broken. And I'm going to read on. And hell followed. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. So it's saying that these plagues that's going to come from the fourth seal being broken. The fourth part of the earth is going to be the a fourth part of the earth is going to be destroyed. When you look at the effects of the Black Plague and how it destroyed and killed many of the population of the European society, if I was to lay out a map of the whole earth, the European continent is only a fourth part of that map, right? So when you really check this out, 
right? When you really check this out, um, these prophecies are being fulfilled. And still being fulfilled until this day. More plagues is going to come out. And the plagues are going to be worse. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them. Over the fourth part of the earth. See hell. Hell is just simply a condition. So when it said hell followed with him. Conditions was worsened. Because of the plagues that was being brought down on this earth major changes that's going to come from the events that's unfolding right before our very eyes major changes all right um i spoke about how um they're going to try to enforce the vaccinations and enforcing the vaccinations is just a way of them displaying their control over the people which brings me to my next point the next major change is controlling how our currency work how our currency is used and i'm not saying that this is going to be the actual economic collapse needed to bring about the mark of the beast to bring about the one world currency to bring about the cash of society that's going to come prophesied according to the scriptures but the economy is definitely going to get hard hit hard from this it's already being hit hard from this banks are going to go bankrupt many banks are going to merge together to become one bank to prevent this right which means you're going to have less options in the world and new policy changes. All right. All right. We're going to read a scripture in the gospel of John chapter two, verse 13 to 16. And it reads, and the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus, Yahweh Shad, went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers that's the money changes that's the exchanges right and the changes of money sitting and when he had made a scourge so now christ got so mad when he seen this thing he made a scourge a scourge is a whip all right when he had made a scourge of small cords he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes. So he flipped over the money changes, right? Money um, uh, and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, peep what he said. A house of merchandise. He was speaking in reference to the way that they was dealing with the concept of money at that time, right? That they was making merchandise off of the people. Why am I bringing this scripture out? Because we just went through um, one of the seals being broken out of the seven seals about the value of money. All right. And the value of it going down and the fluctuation of it going up and down in regards to different products. All right. And now Christ was saying, listen, with this same concept, you are making merchandise of the people. How are they doing that? Well, the currency that was used by the by the people who was ruling at that time, which was the Roman government was worth more than the currency that was being used by the Hebrew Israelites. All right. So let's say uh, a silver coin for the Romans that was made by the Romans was worth two silver coins that the Hebrew Israelites made. Right. What they were doing was around Passover time. Or whenever people had to make a sacrifice for their sins, they would say, we're not accepting the currency of the heathens. So you have to give me three Roman coins in exchange for a Hebrew coin, knowing good and well that the Roman coins was worth more than the Hebrew coins. So they was making people go broke. They was making merchandise off of them by making the value of their dollars go up and down, up and down. All right. And using it to their advantage. So this concept, Christ condemned it in this instance because the idea of the market of beasts is to make the whole world 
slaves to make the whole world merchandise. We're going to go to the book of Revelations chapter 13 and we're going to start from verse 15 because before we deal with the mark of the beast, we're going to talk about the image of the beast because the image of the beast is just as dangerous as the mark of the beast. Many so-called Christian religions all right, and other faiths that claim to deal with the Bible speak about the mark of the beast, but none of them speak about the image of the beast because the image supports their supremacist doctrine. So we're going to read Revelations chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image that the image of the beast of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So now, just to give you context of what we read in the beast in Revelation chapter 13 is the same beast that you read about in Daniel's chapter 7, the fourth beast in that chapter. That beast was uh, uh, is representative of a nation of people that was going to be ruling the earth in the last days. OK, and those people was going to make an image of of themselves that's why i said that the image of the beast the image of the beast so if the beast represents a nation of people that's ruling in the last days the image of the beast is an image that's a reflection of them it's not a golden calf all right it's not a a, a fairy tale fictitious idol it's an image of the same people that are ruling and they cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and this actually happened and has been happening still until this day think about it when they came here to what they call the new world when they came here to what they called america they bought the image of the beast it was an image of themselves this image was a false image of christ and for those of you who think that color doesn't matter right when you read the scripture you see how much color matters because not only does this image give you a contrary description to what we read in the scriptures but it also gives you a spirit that is different than the spirit of the christ that we read it gives you teachings and doctrines that's different than the teachings of the christ that we read everything that you know of about christ is contrary to the christ that we read about in the bible starting with his image so when you accept that image you're accepting the religion the doctrine the mental thinking that comes with it and he calls if all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand and now this goes back to the point that i was making that now these same people that's ruling have decided we are going to make merchandise of the whole world. So it started out with God's chosen people. It started out with enslaving the Israelites, but now even their own people could be slaves. That's why I said free our bond. Who's the bond? The Israelites that's in slavery. Who's the free? The lower class of their people that's not part of the 1%. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell. And this is the reason why we keep talking about a cashless society, right? One of the major changes that's going to happen is the pushing forward into this cashless society. Because in order for you to purchase or sell, you would need this mark. And the mark of the beast has been being instituted since the establishment of this country. Starting with social security cards, license and registrations, right? You need a license just to cut somebody hair. You need their permission. Just to fish, you need they permission. In the UN, if a country disagrees with America or uh, another country on the same status as, uh, as America, they can get sanctioned, right? They will make penalties, put penalties on that country to stop people from buying their natural resources and their oil and things of, of such manner or from them selling to other countries, right? 
So the concept of the Mark of the Beast has already been in play. The only thing yet is they just haven't brought about the Mark. They haven't brought about the Mark that will pretty much substitute what we call currency today. So it reads, um, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the, the mark. The mark. So the only thing that could fit this prophecy is what they would call the RFID chip as we know it today. All right. And when you really look at this chip, they're going to make it where all your personal information could be there in that chip. Your hospital records there in that chip. Your currency there in that chip. And all you got to do is swipe your hand the same way how you swipe your debit card. The same. The RFID chip it has all of that. All right. And right now they haven't fully activated it as the mark of the beast as we read in here in the scriptures but it will be and it won't be just a gps tracking um chip it'll be more than that all right isaiah chapter 65 verse 13 therefore thus saith the lord god yahweh behold my servants shall eat my servants shall eat so if you consider yourself a servant of the lord the lord letting you know you're not going to go starving during this time you're going to eat. All right. Why? Because you're not going to be dependent on the supermarkets. You're not going to be dependent on ShopRite or Walmart. Because everybody else, they're going to be dependent on that. Because they live their whole lives working 40, 50 something hours a week, day in, day out, knowing only what the beast has taught them. Knowing only how to play their part in society and make the beast continue operating. This automatic machine with iron teeth described in the book of Daniels. They only know how to make the beast continue operating. All right. So during this time, I don't want to see none of you people out there who are who are um, servants of the most high, calling yourselves Israelites, being idle, talking about I'm doing a new challenge. All right. This is not the time to be idle while we're in quarantine. Yes. Enjoy it. All right. But don't be idle. Be productive and use this time to prepare because more things is going to happen and, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. This is only the beginning of sorrows. So I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. Many of y'all. All right, especially the ones in the world, you want to drink, you want to smoke, all right, you want to get high and drunk all day, go to sleep and wake up and 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 um, drink and smoke and go back to sleep again. Scripture says, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. Remember that sleep is the cousin of death. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Why is they going to suffer hunger? Because you're too busy using this quarantine time to do the latest damn challenge. On Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is, right? But the ones who's not slothful, the ones who's not lazy, they're going to say, hey, I never knew how to fish and I never had the time to learn it. Maybe I'm going to use this quarantine time to learn how to fish now. All right. So now here's a few things that you could do while we're in quarantine, which we don't know how long it's going to last, whether it's going to be a few weeks, a few months, a year. We don't know. But learn how to farm. All right. Why, why should you learn how to farm? Because a time is going to come where you can't depend on the supermarkets. And I'm letting you know right now, you depend on the supermarkets. And the next time you go to Walmart, they're going to scan your eye on some um, I Am Legend stuff. And they're going to say you got the coronavirus and lock you in a chain because they're going to use these Walmarts as they ain't going to. Um, um, what, what the heck they call it? Uh, <laughs> they're going to use these uh, Walmarts to contain people there. All right. And lock people up. That's why they close it down all of the stores. But they have you go only to the major stores. Right. And then. You thinking, oh, wow, I'm so happy that that Walmart is open, right? But little by little, you're going to see more police there. 
because people going to act stupid over tissue. So you're going to see more police there, more of a military presence little by little. They're already telling you how many waters you could get, how many um, supplies you could get depending on how valuable it is. Next thing you know, you're going to go in there. They're going to be saying, hey, um, you need an RFID chip to purchase anything. Do you plan on getting it? No. Lock them up and plant them. So learn how to farm. Learn how to hunt. All right. Learn how to hunt. We don't know what type of catastrophe might happen. We have no idea what type of catastrophe could happen next that the Most High might bring down on this earth. And we might have to be on some Book of Eli type stuff. So learn how to hunt and go look for your own food. Learn how to butcher. Learn how to clean it. Cut it up. All right. Even even um dry it. Preserve it so it could save. Right. Because you might not have access to a farm life. You might not have access to um, vegetables, but you might be able to hunt for meat and be able to, to dehydrate it and, and preserve it for a time. But you got to learn how to cut it up. You got to learn how to kill it, do fresh kills and all of that stuff. You understand? Learn how to start fires. This is stuff you could look up while you still got the internet, while you still got YouTube, while you still got Google. You could look these things up right now in quarantine. This should take up so much time. Just learn how to do these things. Learn how to start fires. The scriptures tell you, man, in that day, which shall be taken from the world. A lot of this knowledge that you think is common, people ain't going to know it. And when things get crazy and savage, right, and you know this stuff, you're going to be a valuable asset. Learn how to fish, all right? Learn how to build tents and huts like it says in uh, Leviticus 23 when it comes to Feast of Tabernacles. Learn how to live off grid. Be self-sufficient. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 12, it says, I know both how to be abased, all right, meaning be in the lowest point, and I know how to abound, meaning I know how to be rich if I have to be. I know how to deal with money if I have it in my hands. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full, meaning Paul knew how to deal with his with, with his situation if he always had food to eat and to be hungry. Paul also knew how to deal with situations if he ain't have it and he wasn't able to eat both to abound and to suffer need all right so learn how to live with little start start preserving your water start limiting your showers start limiting how much you eat learn how to be a base like the way it says in the scriptures what paul just said all right and the reason why we're saying that is because and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because we don't know how far along into the tribulation it's going to be before christ come back Here's some more things that have to happen before Christ come back. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13 to 15. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. This is speaking about the nuclear destruction. God is going to shake the heavens. The earth is going to be trembling. All right. Because the bombs is going to start hitting. So this is the reason why I'm saying people really think Christ is coming back tomorrow. There's a lot of things that have to be fulfilled. We got to go into this cashless society. The government got to um, have more control over the people. All right. And also the nuclear bombs got to hit. And the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as a chaste row. And as a sheep that no man take it up, they shall every man... They shall every man turn to his own people. They shall every man turn to his own people. So now the Bible is letting you know in the book of Isaiah, everybody going to go to their own people because that's who they're going to trust first. As I stated earlier in this video, all of the seals has been broken except the seventh seal. All right. And we are officially in the sixth seal and in the sixth seal um, is the prophecy of World War One, Two and Three occurring. World War Three being the nuclear bombs. We're going to read in Revelations chapter six, verse 12 to 15. And I beheld 
when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Why is there an earthquake? Because the bombs is being set off. Just like we read in Isaiah 13. This is describing the same event. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Why is the sun black? Because the clouds, the dust, the smoke that come from the, from the bombs going off. It's going to cover the whole sky. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. All right, the satellites is going to fall from out of the sky and everything in that day. It's going to look like the stars is falling from the earth in that day. You ever been over a, a, a gigantic bonfire and looked into the sky where the fire was and it looked like the sky was melting? That's what's going to be happening in those days. Even as the fig tree cast for untimely figs, when she is shaken of the mighty wind. And the heaven, and the heaven, this ain't talking about spiritual heaven. This is talking about the sky. And the heaven departed as a scroll. The heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. All right. So now this is showing you how it's going to happen because a lot of y'all think that this scripture is talking about the coming of Christ, but Christ don't come into the seventh seal. So what event is this happening? What event is happening right now in the sixth seal? World War Three. It said the heaven departed as a scroll, as when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Why? Because there's going to be bombs set off all over around the world. So this ain't no flea doctrine of, oh, go to this country because you'll be safe. Or go to this wilderness because you'll be safe. There's nowhere where you could really be safe. This is just um, a, a video going into how to keep yourself safe as long as you can from whatever danger that you could possibly actually avoid. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. All right. So you got people preparing for this. All right. Preparing for this, actually having dens and, and bunkers stored up with food and all of that stuff, thinking that they're going to survive a nuclear war. So um, what could you be doing to prepare yourself in this time um, while you're in this quarantine? Um, when you get those little stimulus checks that they try and send out. Um, try to use it for something valuable. Try to buy some land that's away from major cities, military bases. Um, one, because you could possibly be away from the areas that could get hit by bombs. But not just that. You want to be away from people because in um, tragedies and chaos, people start getting chaotic and killing one another, fighting one another, backstabbing one another. So you want to be away from people as much as possible. You want to be away from military bases. You want to be away from um, places where there's a lot of um, government military presence because they're going to start rounding people up into the FEMA camps. All right. Learn how to read maps. All right. Just in case something happened and you're not able to stay where you're at and you might have to move short notice at least learn how to read maps so you'll be able to know where you're going because there won't be any um cell phones there won't be no gps's in that day learn how to travel in groups um if you find yourself try not to be in groups but if you find yourself in the group learn how to travel in groups that's why you got to get back into the old into the old testament in the book of numbers when we was in the wilderness you know we even had it like you read in numbers chapter 10 where certain horns would get blown and then you had the east side and the south side and these tribes that was on this side get up and walk so forth and so on so um have some form of of um militancy to be able to travel in groups all right because the prophecy 
in the scriptures do say that the 12 tribes of Israel is going to come out of the land of the north. They're going to come out and walk down together. They're going to come out and walk down together out of the land of the north. And we're going to be the Indian vet of a national emergency or crisis in this country, the Office of Emergency Planning can put into effect executive orders that will suspend your constitutional bill of rights and take freedom from your ass with the signing of a piece of paper. Executive orders like Order Number 10,995, which provides for the government takeover of all communications and media. So R&B, hip hop, jazz, rock, and pop. Go. Order number 10,998 to take over all food resources and farms. So bugs, ulabalas, and amifugas, gone. 10,999 provides for the takeover of all modes of transportation and control of all major highways. So your next coops, beamers, and the bins, gone. Order number 11,000 provides for the mobilization of all civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Hello, slavery. 11,001, the takeover of all health, education, and welfare functions. 11,002 designates Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons in the country. Read Revelations chapter 13. 11,003 allows for the takeover of all airports. See, the FAA is trying to do that shit right now. 11,004 provides for housing and finance authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned as unsafe, and establish new locations for population. The same oh, shit oh, that just happened in your homes in Trenton, New Jersey, and it happened to Cabrini Green and other projects in Chicago. See, in the event of any national crisis in this country, these executive orders can be put into effect. Let's say if the World Trade Center is burned, or a federal building in Oklahoma City, a plane blowing up over Long Island, a pipe bomb at the Olympics, these serve to create the panic that is necessary to issue executive order number 